Good morning, everyone. Joe Neat here, executive producer on Sea of Thieves with another weekly update. Uh, so we're getting really close to cursed sales and really the, the, the kind of update that we're putting out this week is mostly bug fixes, performance improvements, uh, but we've also included a couple of little teases to what's coming in cursed sales. For the, so for those of you that kind of like exploring and piecing things together, there's a couple of little bits in there. Uh, and one other thing that we're really calling out in the build notes that we think is really important is that you know, because of the, the threat that's coming to, um, to the Sea of Thieves, uh, some of the shopkeepers are, are thinking about dropping their prices. So for those of you that are saving up gold and really eyeing something expensive in the shops, uh, we would advise keeping hold of the gold until Curse Sales update next week um, because yeah, there, there might well be some drops in prices for, for our players. So yeah, obviously worth mentioning the Sunken Curse has now finished. Uh, and so it's worth mentioning there isn't a new build rat adventure between now and Curse Sales just because all of our uh, energy and, and effort is really focused on the Curse Sales experience and delivering that uh, to everyone. So this is going to be so exciting. There's play tests going on all, all, all the time in the studio at the moment. Everybody kind of we're doing that final balancing pass and stuff. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about this. So firstly, Curse Sales, uh, the, the time limiting campaign runs for three weeks. And so it's quite a lengthy one this time. And each week there's going to be a new thing to kind of go and do, go and achieve with new goals uh, and new rewards. So should be a lot of fun, um, should be a lot of replayability in this one for everyone. So yeah, really looking forward to, to this. And I, and I think the main kind of thrust of the time limited campaign is going to be a really watchable kind of um, spectacle, really. And so the Brigantine, so the three-player ship that we're introducing. So some of you may, may have noticed uh, a couple of things, actually, in the uh, images that we put out, one, one of which was that the crow's nest was on the front mast. And actually, we've been looking at that internally, and we've decided, last minute, uh, to move it to the back mast. So originally, we had it on the front mast because we wanted something, try something a little bit different. But as we worked on the, the aesthetic look of the ship, we actually realized that we were blocking um, some of the 360 view from the crow's nest. So we've made the last minute change, moved it back. Um, so yeah, those the images will look slightly different. So on the, on the promotional um, images that we released to uh, promote Curse Sales, one of the images of the Brigantine, there was a couple of little extra bits of detail on there that, that some of the sharper eyed amongst you in the community noticed. And um, yeah, that was an accidental tease of some future stuff that's coming, not for Curse Sales, um, but we are working on to, to, to come in the future. So yeah, not coming quite yet. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're getting really good at accidentally linking things. So apologies for that, but um, a definite glimpse into what's to come for the future. And finally on the Brigantine, uh, there's also a behind the scenes video coming out on that today, uh, as, as well as this video. So, so look out for that, should give you some real insight into kind of how we've built it, what's it for and stuff. And it's been really fun using it in our internal play tests for, for Curse Sales. We were just chatting about that before the video actually. So uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a really fun introduction into the world. It gives that nice balance between uh, kind of speed and maneuverability and kind of, um, weapon power and stuff. So yeah, it's a real nice introduction alongside the other ships that we've got. I also wanted to give a little insight into just what development is like during the kind of quite pressured time period leading up to a release like Curse Sales. So obviously we're introducing a bunch of new stuff to the world and with the skeleton ships themselves, specifically those, like they introduce a lot of complexity from, you know, from an AI perspective, from a performance perspective. And so all of the effort right now is kind of in, in two areas, one of which is the tuning and the balancing of the play experience. And we like, we feel really good about that. We've done loads of play tests around it, had loads of great experiences. Um, and then the other effort is all about performance. And so by introducing these into the world and also by our uh, the time limited campaign kind of drawing players and skeleton ships together, we're almost creating this worst case scenario in terms of people and everybody together in one place um, in the world. And so it really puts a focus on our efforts around performance to try and ensure a really solid, stable play experience for everyone. And so there's lots of fun slash tough conversations that go on during this time where you've got all different disciplines looking at you know, what, what savings can we make from an art perspective or a design perspective or an engineering perspective. And you're really kind of looking at you know, what's the risk here? What, what, do we want to put this in now or do we want to save it and, and then assess this in the, in, the, in the wild and see how many people are coming together? How many people are you getting on each server? Because, you know, we can look at our data and we can predict how many people on average are on each server um, based on how many um, players pick the sloop or pick the galleon, but we're also introducing the brigantine, so that introduces another variable. So there's all sorts of things that go on um, with this kind of... Uh, development challenge and it's it really makes it a kind of a tough and stressful time for, for the whole team um, so yeah loads of conversations going around this we're right in the final throes of it right you know we're very close to to the release of it but it's also something that as the build goes live 
obviously we we've, we've been testing with pioneers we'll continue testing with pioneers up to up to launch but you really only get a, a completely accurate view of how everything is holding up once we get it out to to all of our players so on launch day throughout launch week we're going to be closely monitoring everything from you know our performance how many people are on each server how many people are coming together and really looking at do we need to tweak and tune things in the background and as a team that's really where our stress point is at, at the moment and so as, as we move into um, into day one of Curse Sales, all of our hopes and expectations are that everything's going to work great and all the performance will be as we expect uh, because you know we'll be shipping it with the, the best of knowledge, the best of intentions from, from that place. Uh, but if we know that it's just going to be one of those things where we're going to be really carefully monitoring every single graph we have. We'll have our like mission control room here with everybody kind of looking at it, seeing how many people are coming in, how many people are going into each server and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's fun, exciting and, and slightly scary all at the same time, but it, it should be a lot of fun. So finally, I just wanted to end just with a little wrap up around San Diego Comic Con. So obviously some of us were lucky enough to go out there last week uh, and it was amazing and so from meeting Freddie Prince Jr who was an amazing fan of Sea of Thieves um, quite surreal some of the stories he shared about the, his gaming history and the people he plays with and stuff um, and all of the stories and how he perceives uh, Sea of Thieves genuinely amazing and he has such a good way of describing what makes Sea of Thieves so special so we obviously recorded the panel and that will be coming out on our channels and really looking forward to getting everybody to see that and to kind of just understand you know how well he understands our game and going from Freddie Prince Jr who's one fan of Sea of Thieves to all of the other fans that we met um, at uh, Comic-Con genuinely there's nothing better than going to these shows and meeting members of the community that like that love the game as much as we do and have their own stories and their own memories and you know everyone's at their different levels of, of progress and stuff but it's it's genuinely incredible there's nothing like it so to everybody that we met there and everyone we've met at the other shows and and those that we will meet at the shows in the future it's like and and to everybody else in the community like this game is what it is because of you like we've created a world we've created sea of thieves but we've kind of handed over the, the, the running of it to, to our players, right? We've created this environment, but, but try to remove as many rules as possible and, and let everyone have this ultimate pirate adventure. And genuinely, the player behavior in the game right now, all the different players we've got in there, the different motivations, like player encounters are richer than they've ever been. You know, yes, we're adding features, we're adding new stuff with Curse Elves, we'll continue to add to it, and that's going to keep making the opportunity for stories richer, but it's also the players. All of the players that are at different levels, you know, the pirate legends that are helping kind of new players in, um, people who are just meeting up and, and running kind of loot and lore games and stuff, the, all of these amazing things that we see in the community. Um, it's, it's, this is you, you. It's, and you make this game rich. You make it amazing. And so... Um, we've been doing press interviews around Curse Sales, and, and that was one of the things um, that, I, that I said because I was asked, like, what, you know, why should people come back? Why should new players try Sea of Thieves? And I honestly believe there's never been a better time to get into Sea of Thieves now because everyone that's playing it gets it, they get what we're trying to do, and they're playing in the right way. And it makes for such an incredible multiplayer experience that's like nothing I've ever seen or played. And you know, as a developer and as the other developers here, we love nothing more than jumping in and playing and playing with you and meeting people and sharing stories. So, um, you know, Comic-Con was like a little microcosm of that, of meeting people, but it's also in the game. So, yeah, thanks to everybody that's playing. Thanks to everybody that's, that's going to be new and coming in in the future. But, like, we are blown away by just how Sea of Thieves is taking shape. And, yeah, thanks to everybody that's been involved in that. And, yeah, really looking forward to the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with everything Sea of Thieves, then subscribe to our channel and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers. Don't worry, I'll, I'll just wait here. I'm not doing, not doing much anyway. A couple, couple of good videos there if you want to watch. <laughs>